It appears that Chinese supermarkets are stocking and selling a plethora of illegal products. And no, that's not exaggeration. This Chinese supermarket rabbit hole runs deep. When I did the original video about the Chinese takeover, many people understood the message and the implications of this supposed Chinese takeover. At the same time, many people didn't, whether deliberately or not. To be fair, there's only so much information I can fit in 10 to 12 minutes, and that's why I'm turning this into a docu-series. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's pull back the curtain on this rapid expansion of Chinese supermarkets across Gan. One medical mistake can permanently change your life or the life of someone you love. These mistakes are too common in America, causing injury and sometimes death. If you suspect that you were injured as a result of a medical mistake, call Washington Law Firm today. Don't lose your opportunity to get compensated. Don't wait. Book your free consultation with Washington Law Firm by calling 718 877 3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. Before I get to the main topic, I want to thank you, the viewers, for your support of this docuseries, the votes and ideas that you gave in the comments on that first video, and of course, your support of the platform. In this series, I'm going to share a lot of important information and bring light to issues that affect Guyanese all across Guyana. To keep this going, I'm going to need your support. And how you support is by liking the video, leaving an insightful comment, and sharing it with Guyanese who absolutely need to hear this information. The more you support, the more videos keep on coming. But enough of that. Let's get this series going. In February, the Association of Chinese Enterprises in Guyana hosted its annual dinner commemorating the 2024 Chinese Lunar New Year. China's ambassador to Guyana, Guo Haiyan, was invited to attend the dinner along with a number of government officials led by Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips. Founded in 2013 with a history of 11 years, the Association of Chinese Enterprises in Guyana, ACEG, is one of the earliest established foreign business chambers in Guyana and it is receiving credit for the notable expansion of trade and business relations between China and Guyana. ACEG's Vice President, Andrew Jin, opened the evening's activities with a speech on how Chinese businesses in Guyana, registered under the association, are doing work to promote cooperation with local businesses while also developing deeper business relations. He said the contributions were nothing short of positive, even as he applauded the vision of the government which has put the country on a path to becoming first world. We are honored and proud to be a part of history. He told the gathering of well over 300 persons. The association's pragmatic cooperation between Guyana and China was highlighted in greater detail by Ambassador Guo. She said it was a proven fact that Chinese businesses in Guyana are adhering to the principles of mutual benefit and abiding by the laws while respecting local customs and contributing to local welfare. Let's stop right there. The Chinese ambassador said, and I quote, It was a proven fact that Chinese businesses in Guyana are adhering to the principles of mutual benefit and abiding by the laws while respecting local customs and contributing to local welfare. Her statements were glowing, complimentary, and worthy of an event as auspicious as that dinner. Of course, the government officials clapped and nodded in approval. Fortunately for us, our hands aren't tied by the velvet rope of diplomacy, so we're free to scrutinize every bit of that statement. I won't call the ambassador a liar. However, I will say that her statement was anything but a proven fact. In fact, I can prove every section of her statement false, or at the very least, dispute every last one of those claims. This is the backdrop for the entire series, and throughout it, we'll examine these claims with evidence and logic to see how credible they really are. Regardless, we have to start somewhere, and I think the best place for us to start is with the law. A quick walk into many Chinese supermarkets and stores will show you that they don't necessarily abide by the law. One of the most common breaches of the law is their stores stocking and selling products that lack the necessary information in English. The packaging and labeling is often completely in Chinese. 
This violates the Consumer Affairs Act of Guyana and probably violates the Food and Drug Act as well. Let's investigate. So what does the law say? In the Consumer Affairs Act Part 4, outlining the duties of suppliers, Section 15 says, A supplier shall, before payment is made for goods by a consumer, provide to the consumer in English all information concerning the goods being sold, including, where applicable, the origin, brand, price, expiry dates, care, terms, components, contents, hazards, proper use, assembly, installation, weight, and size, or dimensions of those goods. Where a supplier fails to comply with subsection 1, the supplier shall, notwithstanding anything to the contrary in any warranty given to the consumer, be liable for any damage or injury done to the goods or consumer's person or property that can be directly attributed to the consumer's lack of information. Subsection 3 says, a supplier who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offense. In the Food and Drugs Act of Guyana, Part 2, Section 6, Subsection 1, any person who labels, packages, treats, processes, sells, or advertises any food in a manner that is false, misleading, or deceptive, or is likely to create an erroneous impression regarding its character, value, quantity, composition, merit, or safety, is guilty of an offense. Subsection 2 says, an article of food that is not labeled or packaged as required by the regulations or is labeled or packaged contrary to the regulations shall be deemed to be labeled or packaged contrary to subsection 1. In many Chinese stores across the country, you'll find products like these with insufficient information in English contrary to the Consumer Affairs Act. You'll most commonly see this occurring with food items, but the same issue can be seen on other categories or other types of products as well. The examples in this video were taken from Fortune Trade on Regent Street and One Plus One Supermarket on the West Bank of Demerara. However, I'm certain if you check a Chinese store or supermarket near you, you'll probably see something or some things very similar to these. The violations of the Consumer Affairs Act go even further. You may notice that when you shop at many of these establishments, you are just given a receipt. You have to request it, and if you don't, you'll leave the store without it. Closer examination of those receipts will reveal that there's no VAT amount on the invoice, nor is there a VAT registration number. The lack of these two things takes it beyond the violation of the Consumer Affairs Act and into a violation of the Tax Act. And for this to be coincidence, you could say, all right, this is happening at one, maybe two locations. But that's not the case. It's happening almost everywhere. Let's take a look back at the law. Under Section 5 of the regulations, a sales invoice under Section 28 of the Act is a document executed in the form required by the commissioner that includes the following information. A, the name, address, and VAT registration number of the registered person making the supply. B, a description sufficient to identify the goods supplied or services rendered. C, the price of the supply. D, the amount of VAT if separately stated. And E, the issue date of the sales invoice. Let's also take a look at Part 14, Offenses and Penalties, Division 1, Criminal Offenses. Under Section 66, Failure to Apply for VAT Registration, a person who knowingly or recklessly fails to apply for VAT registration as required by Section 11, 1, 7, or 8 commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding $25,000 and imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. Let's take a look at this receipt from Cheng Cheng Life Supermarket on Sandy Bob Street in Kitty. You'll notice that there's no VAT registration number and when you get to the bottom, there's also no amount listed for VAT. So are we to assume that none of these items have VAT on them? Or is the supermarket not calculating VAT? What exactly is going on here? We can go to another Chinese supermarket, same thing. And yet another in the same area, same thing. You're free to test this out at a Chinese supermarket near you. Buy some items, demand your receipt, and after you get it, check. 
you're very likely to find no VAT registration number and no amount listed for VAT on the receipt. Feel free to share your results and raise awareness about this. It is important to understand that as consumers, you have rights. And if you notice any of these problems at any of these establishments, you have a right to report them to the relevant authorities. In the case of violations of the Consumer Affairs Act, you have to report them to the Competition and Consumer Affairs Commission. In the case of the Tax Act, again, Revenue Authority. For matters concerning food and drugs, the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department is who you need to call. You can also support the series by sharing photos, videos, or stories of illegal or unethical activity that you may notice at any of these establishments across the country. What do you want to see me talk about next in this series? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this in the future. As always, Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.